that I took some of those lessons and into We Have to Stop Now, and we did make it subscription based, yeah. and um, we were able to do two seasons. I, I do hope one day we'll be able to wrap mm-hmm. that show up and do the third season because mm-hmm. I still care about the project a lot. Right. Cool. I think that that's the lesson mm-hmm. um, of. of you know, projects online. So it sounds like it's been your choice uh, not to contend with traditional mainstream media. I mean, it, it has nothing to do with the fact that you're an out actress or um, have you <laughs> experienced any challenges with that? Uh, well, there was a period of time um, where I was in main. I was auditioning mainstream and testing at networks and, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I, I have some mainstream credits mm-hmm. and I was going through that audition process, which is a really, um, for people who don't know what it's like for, you know, an actor who's doing this, it's an extremely uh, soul-sucking uh, part yeah. of our life to, yeah. to, to do this because yeah. you keep getting close yeah. to... Yeah. Like me, like me, like me. Next, next. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's a rejection every day. And yeah. then to, to get to a network test where you're up for series regular and which can change your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the kind of, that's career changing stuff. Right. And to keep getting that close and not getting it is a really frustrating part of being an actor. And um, there was one particular project I, w- I was testing a lot. I finally landed a pretty big, like an eight episode arc on a on an established TV show, mm-hmm. which felt like it was finally my big break and I'd sort of been through hell to get it. Mm-hmm. And as I was driving to the... Um, to the table read the show got canceled Mm, and um, this was and of course you know think about all the money that was involved like finally I could pay off my student loans I could do this I could do that that was the turning point for me Mm. and I decided right then and there that I was going to start doing my own thing Mm -hmm. that there was this niche market um, that was starting to emerge that I was really Mm -hmm. interested in and that I felt like I had something to offer Mm -hmm. so it's not that I threw away this huge mainstream career but I was in the mix and right. I decided that I wanted to focus my energy in a place where I could actually get work done and, mm-hmm. and get work Right. so um, it was a conscious decision I haven't been out auditioning in the mainstream for the past few years because I've kept busy right. doing stuff busy. in the niche market Absolutely. and yeah. I've been very happy to do it mm-hmm. these are roles I want to play and these are projects that, that mm-hmm. I would want to see mm-hmm. well I you know not even knowing about that part of your life just knowing that you were an out actress. I was one of those people who I'm personally a fan of you being an out actress um, and pioneering a role for um, other out actresses and creative people, period. Mm-hmm. Um, I came out really late in my career. I just, I don't know, scared to death. It would shut doors for me. And when you have children and et cetera, right. and then realizing how independent things ha- are becoming is very encouraging. But before that happened, you were already out there trailblazing. Brave. You know, that's brave. And she's she's gorgeous. She could do any role out there. I know for a fact that I missed out on a pilot because mm-hmm. I was out. I mm-hmm. The casting director who is gay mm-hmm. and was a friend of mine told me after the network test, because what, ha- what happens is a network... They're not just looking at you as an actor. They're mm-hmm. looking at you as a commodity. Can okay. this person go into syndication for 10 years? Can this audience get on board? You know, are the advertisers going to be afraid of this person for whatever mm. reason? So, And this was five, wow. five to seven years ago. Yeah. Things have changed considerably. But at yeah. that time, one of the things that they discuss is is this person commercially viable? Mm-hmm. And for an out actor, there are a lot of advertisers, right. a lot of companies that will shy away from right. that. And that's not something that a network wants to deal mm-hmm. with. So they discuss the fact that I was openly gay and mm-hmm. they decided it was, that was, you know, whatever else reasons they decided not to cast mm-hmm. me, but that was definitely a part of the, the conversation. Wow. And um, he said, I'm, I'm telling you this not because I'm asking you to go back in the closet. I'm telling you this because I want you to know that it was discussed and that that was a part of the decision. Mm -hmm. And take that and do with it what you will, but I wanted to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So I know for a fact there's Mm -hmm. at least one big role that I lost out on because I'm openly gay. Mm -hmm. Um, On the other hand, there have been a lot of other opportunities that I have gotten as an actor Mm -hmm. because I'm openly gay. So to me, it it all balances out and I would never do anything different Mm -hmm. and I I couldn't them being closeted and mm. I'm friends with relatively you know I'm not I'm not saying I hang out with A-list stars but I, I know mm-hmm. some people of some you know yeah. of some fame that are still closeted mm. and it's I feel bad for them I yeah. mean every day for them is like yeah. You know, all the money and all this, all this to, to me, right. they're unhappy. 
fundamentally unhappy. Mm-hmm. Fundamentally. You know? Fundamentally. I love the way you say that. Fundamentally, because that is that is so true. I feel like that's what my life was uh, on radio, where I'd have a, a same gender loving person call, and they want to do a request to, you know, their lover, and I'm totally cool to play it, but I could hear the you know, the shrink in their voice as they're asking. Right. And then having to deal with program directors and this and that, how how much of it I can play on the air. Can I play their request live? No, but you can play the song and send it out to, you know, it's just a lot of politics in it. And and realizing that um, maybe I could put myself in a better position to uh, create a platform where that could be completely acceptable. Right. And uh, again, I say it is people like you, Jill Bennett, who have just kind of blazed a path of independence and fearlessness that, uh, you know, it became contagious. There's so many listening to us right now that are going, yeah. Thank you. You know, hell yeah, we can do it. I don't think you realize how much space it takes up in your life to be closeted Mm -hmm. until you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, I witnessed a a little taste of this with Meredith Baxter, Mm -hmm. who, now Meredith was never closeted. In Los Angeles, she she would go to events with her partner, Nancy, Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. She never talked about it or did any, because she wasn't necessarily in the media at that Mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Well, she came to do We Have to Stop Now. (laughs) Right. During that process, um, she came out publicly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was my honor to be sort of a part of that and to see Mm -hmm. sort of the before, the fear, the worry, and then the after, which was complete relief. Mm -hmm. And, And her saying, you know, I didn't realize how much energy this was taking up in my life. Yes. Not, not again, she wasn't closeted. She just right. didn't, you know, it just wasn't something she discussed. Right. And then now that she, she has, mm-hmm. it's like this thing has been lifted and mm-hmm. it was beautiful to, to see it and mm-hmm. to feel in a strange way sort of responsible for it because we asked her to be <laughs> in it and she did it and then mm-hmm. everything led to one thing to another. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the the main thing for people. I think when they come out, right. they don't realize how much energy it took yeah. to, to, to not be just who you are. That's very true. Guys, don't be so afraid to be creatively out, you yeah. know, because we need to see your creativity and allow, allow yourself to be a prism and let the creativity funnel through you without all the blockage and the crap. It's a, it blocks everything, <laughs> it truthfully. Does. There's so many sides. You know, people like to say... There is no difference between gay people and straight people. Yes, fundamentally correct. We're all human beings. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that I'm attracted to women Mm -hmm. does fundamentally affect many different parts of my life. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you have to keep that under wraps that you realize how much of yourself you're really not sharing with people. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, there are certain actors who I think if they came out would experience a totally different um, not that they're not good already but there's this part of them that mm-hmm. they are that they are pushing down You're and right. i think it affects all parts of mm-hmm. their performance how they relate yes. um, to other people on screen and it's like once you let it go it no longer holds you back mm-hmm. it's been proven um, that media has affected mm-hmm. um, people's opinions towards same sex marriage i mean we the opinion polls have shifted dramatically in the last five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And it's because we see gay people on TV. We see relationships normalized as they are. And people are like, this isn't really a big deal anymore. I mean, the only people that really care now are people who are going to be dying off in the next 25 (laughs) to 30 years. And hopefully they'll have a change of heart before that happens. But if Mm -hmm. not, the kids coming up now, they Mm -hmm. don't care. Right? They don't care at all. They don't care about labels. They don't care. We will have gay marriage in this country. It will happen. There's it will happen. No question. Los Angeles, I'm waiting for you. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, we're coming. We're next. Yes. We've got next. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. We've got next. Um, we have to take a break. All right. We are here with Jill Bennett, and isn't she just delightful and insightful and incredible? You can't see the gorgeousness, but that's all mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> she has a brand new project on the horizon to share with us and a few surprises uh, of her own. You don't want to miss it, okay? You're listening to The Satin Lounge with Kia Renee, and we are breathing in the scintillating Joe Bennett. More to come. Don't move. Don't call. 